use that on this? Uh, actually, I'm going to show you how to make a simple one. Okay, great. Uh, most of the things that are in my devices, which I demonstrate, uh, were put there because people expect to see them, not because they need to be there. Okay. Okay, so okay. this... This device, which I had turned upside down. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, is uh, the high voltage module here. So we come out and we need a L1 uh, coil here. Okay. It's going to be our L1, our input coil. And we're going to run this, uh, since this is alternating current, it's neither plus or minus, it's going to be, uh, what it's going to be doing is uh, coming over here and into here and coming back just like that. Okay. So we've got our high voltage device and we've got an L1 coil and it's all working just fine. At this point it's running at 35,000 cycles per second. Okay, and we don't. Uh, the method I'm teaching you here, uh, you don't have to know about uh, tuning. Uh, the fact that you, the length of the wires that go on this coil here are basically irrelevant because uh, it's being pumped by the uh, uh, high voltage device here, and that's going to set the frequency. The the length of the wires are not going to have anything to do with it. So you don't have to know how to tune it to do this. Okay, the next thing is that we're going to have an L2 coil here, and it's going to have uh, coils on it, and it's going to be out, and this is going to be your uh, uh, minus, and uh, this is going to be your plus down here at the bottom, and uh, electricity uh, or electrical field always moves from the highest of concentration to the lowest. But in this case, what's happening is, uh, it, each coil there has a capacitant uh, and inductive uh, characteristic, so it's magnifying. For example, say that this is uh, 3,000 volts here, and we have 10 turns here, so uh, this is volts, and we have 10 turns. Okay, we divide 10 into 3,000, and that means that each turn is going to equal 300 volts. So uh, each turn on a L2 coil here, each turn on there will uh, have uh, 300 volts on it. So if you have uh, uh, 30 turns, uh, you've got uh, 300, uh, 300 times uh, 30, which would be... Let's see, 300 times 30. Okay, and that's going to be uh, uh, zero, uh, zero, zero, nine. So that you're going to have uh, 9,000 volts on your L2 coil. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's going to do that irregardless of the amount of turns or the frequency or whatever. What we're doing by forcing the uh, 35,000 cycles per second onto this uh, first coil, we're forcing that second coil to duplicate the same thing as long as it's an even division of or multiple, multiple of the wire length in the first coil. Okay. So we've got, at this point we've got 9,000 volts out and uh, uh, we probably will want to put a, a spark gap of some sort in here so that we can, and this goes to your earth ground. Okay, and this center spark, center part of the spark gap will go to earth ground. Okay, okay and this is going to limit the voltage uh, so that uh, it's within the range which you can handle it with whatever device you're going to load this with. So you can go directly from this uh, into a in your transformer out here, and it'd be an isolation transformer. And uh, at this point, what you have to do, since you've got a frequency which the uh, isolation transformer cannot use, you have to correct the frequency. So in order to correct the frequency, uh, you put a resistor 
across the two poles there. In order to determine what resistor size you use, uh, you go to uh, uh, either the American Radio Relay League uh, a chart showing uh, uh, capacitance and resistance and other types of things, uh, which will tell you what approximate frequency you'll end up with. Now, in the case of American Radio Relay League, you're going to be off the end of the chart, and you're going to have to take a little piece of paper and make the grid and extend the chart over about an inch or so and about an inch or so down in order to get, say, 60 cycles or 120 or whatever it is you want. But it, you can do that real easy. Okay. So anyhow, we've got through our... Uh, 12 volts and none of the electrons from the 12 volt battery have left the high voltage module. Uh, uh, the high voltage module uh, has excited electrons in a separate, uh, uh, just like your, uh, 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 your transformer here where you have uh, the two sides are separated from each other so that none of the electricity on this side actually goes through the system and what it does through induction it excites the coil on the other side and your uh, electricity over here is coming from the earth earth grounding and your load is going to be uh, in between the earth grounding and the other pole of that transformer and you're going to have to also put uh, some sort of voltage control on on uh, this thing here and uh, that will be a varactor, V-A-R-A-C-T-E-R, -E and uh, what that is, uh, like on your computer where you have a voltage control thing that keeps the spikes from coming in, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a little capacitor, but it's not. Okay. But it basically will limit the voltage to uh, some level which is okay for the device that you're trying to run. Now, uh, what I have shown you here, uh, you don't know, have to know how to tune it. Uh, it uh, t that takes care of itself for you, and you have to make only one uh, correction in the uh, frequency, and any coil and resistor or any coil and capacitor or any combination of those will give you a particular frequency. Now, uh, Radio Shack has a book on... Uh, uh, electronic tables and such, and uh, uh, you can use the charts in it. Okay. Is this the smaller simplified version? Uh, no, there's uh, some solid state versions of this where all of this is thrown out. <laughs> but I'm not at liberty to talk about them just now. But this this can give somebody an idea that you don't actually have to come. You don't, you don't have to know what you're doing at all.